A loop is a control structure which can be used to repeat commands several times. The first type of loop that we're going to look at is called a for loop. Here, we declare the loop by using the keyword for. We use this statement before the commands that we want to repeat. We're also going to use the keyword end after the commands that we want to repeat. This way, we can specify to our computer exactly which lines of code that we want to loop over. As part of the for loop, we're going to create a new variable. You can think of this variable as a counting variable. We'll give it a number that it's going to start out as, and each time through the loop, it will change its value, and it will count up or down to the ending value. Let's take a look at getting started with the basics of using a for loop. Here I'm going to demonstrate several examples of creating and using a for loop. I'll start out with a basic example so you can get familiar with the syntax. Let's say we have a command or set of commands that we want to repeat several times. This could even be as simple as creating a variable a and assigning it the value of 5. Well, if I want to repeat this command, I could type it out again as the programmer. I could also copy and paste it. So here I've got it four times. What if I wanted to repeat this command 4,000 times? It would be very inefficient for me to have to type it out. This is where the control structure of a loop comes in, where we can tell our computer exactly what commands we want to repeat and how many times they should repeat. How this works is we pick the lines of code we want to repeat and we bracket them with a statement at the beginning and a statement at the end to say exactly where we want uh, this code to repeat. So at the top, we're going to use the keyword here of for. When you type it in, it shows up in blue. As part of the for loop, we're also going to create a new variable. You can think of it as a counting variable. In a lot of programming languages, you'll use the variable i. You don't have to use i. It can be any variable name. Here, i usually means iteration, how many times you repeat. So we'll say that we start out, i gets assigned the value of 1. We're going to count all the way up to 4. Just as an example, we're going to repeat this command four times. Now, we also need to specify where we want this for loop to end. That way, we're not just repeating all our code. So here, the way that this works is any of the commands between for and end will be repeated this number of times that we have. So as I run this script, you'll see the result printed down here to the command window. So now we have assigned the value of 5 to the variable a a total of four times. So I can show you then the order of execution in the context of the full script. Let me add in another command. Before the script, we'll put in a command b gets assigned the value of 2. Now watch what happens when I run the script. So just in the order of operations, first thing that happens is 2 gets assigned to b, and then we enter into the loop, and we repeat this step four times. Code that's after the loop, you can see how this works, right? First we repeat the part with a, after that's done, then we get to the line of code with b. We could also have multiple commands within an individual loop. So watch the order in which these things get executed. It occurs sequentially inside of the loop, where we go from top to bottom. A gets assigned the value of 5, B gets assigned the value of 2. Then we repeat those commands, again, starting over at the top of the loop, and go back through a total of four times, right? We have several things that we could change here. We could change this value to 3. In that case, we're only going to loop three times through, or we could do it five times, right? It's a counting variable. We can specify the number in which these things occur. So in our first example, I'll say using a loop to repeat commands. Very basic example of using the for loop. Let me show you another thing that you can use the for loop for. So in this case, we're going to use the looping variable. And watch how the looping variable changes uh, along the way. So again, we're going to use the keyword for here. I'll pick a different variable name this time, t. This sometimes shows up where we're going to use t to have something to do with time and how time changes. So in this case, we'll start out and we'll go t 
uh, starts at one and it goes up to four. Put n down here. And within our loop, this is where we can actually use the variable t and watch how it changes. So when I run this script, we can see that as we repeat this loop, t gets assigned one, then t gets assigned two, all the way up to four. As I said before, we can change this, watch how it's going to uh, be different each time. We don't have to start at one also. We could start at five and go up to eight. As we've seen the syntax before with creating arrays, we could uh, go up by two. If we wanted to, we could also go down. So all those different options for how we want the looping variable to change. Now that we are printing the a looping variable, I can show you how you can include it in a more complex command. So as another example, let's say we have Q gets assigned the value of five times T. Just for simplicity's sake, we'll say T starts at one and goes up to three. Now watch what ends up getting printed each time we go through the loop. So in this case, we start out T has the value of one, one times five gets assigned to Q, and then two times five gets assigned to Q, and so on. So that's just how you can use the looping variable as part of a mathematical expression. The last one I'm gonna show you then is using the variable to index an array. This is one that we'll use a lot in processing audio. You'll see how later on. So let's say we have some uh, input array. I'm gonna call it n. This is a common thing where we'll have something that we begin with and then we're gonna process it using a loop and we'll get an output from it. So think of it as input to output. So I'm gonna put in just some arbitrary numbers here and organize them in a column vector. So zero, about that 0 0.5, one, and negative 0 0.5. So I'll run this script and we can see the array that we're working with here. Have it organized vertically. These are our numbers. So now we can use a loop to index each element of our array, one by one. I'm gonna use the keyword for here. How about element? Starts at one. We know that there are four elements here, so we're gonna go up to four. We'll bracket the part down here at the bottom. Now, along the way, we're gonna create an output. And we'll index the array. We have our array input. We're gonna index element and one, right? So if I were to go down here before we run the script and say input two comma one, that gives us the value of 0 0.5, four comma one gives us the value of negative 0 0.5, right? How we're indexing it. We're using the looping variable to change how we index the input array each time we go through the loop. So watch this. When I run the script the first time through the loop, we're indexing element one one, which is zero. Then we go element uh, two one, and three one and four one, all the way up through the whole array. Another thing that we can add in here, if we wanted to create an output array, rather than just assigning the individual numbers or values to a, a variable, I'm also going to index at the same time the array for output. So in this case, we assign the first element of our input signal to the first element of our output signal. And then just to see what our result is, I'm going to print the output to the command window down here. So I'll run this script and see now at the end, our output now takes on the value, the first, second, third, and fourth value of our input array. That opens up a lot of different possibilities for us now to process and use mathematical operations to work with this input signal. So there I've demonstrated several examples of using the for loop control structure.